All right, it's time. Um, let's see. I think everybody has done the, the writing project. Did any of you actually try to match the real data in the United States with the, your SIR model of COVID-19? Okay, if you haven't done so, you already got the code. So one thing you can do is actually try to just find the data in Wisconsin or something, just try to match it and try to see, okay, <laughs> how long that whole thing is gonna take and when are we going to go back to normal? That'll be really interesting to see. All right. <laughs> okay, now we have it. So, what were we trying to do? We were trying to say we have a two by two system. Okay, then we have lambda one, v one, lambda two, v two for two by two. This implies your general solution is going to be uh, e to the lambda t one v one plus e to the lambda two t v two, and then any possible combination of these two. Okay, that's basically roughly the idea of how we solve a system. Now you have a three by three, you just have three eigenvectors, three eigenvalues, or n eigenvectors, n eigenvalues. Your solution will be finally the all possible linear combination of all possible um, n eigenvectors with the corresponding solution. After that, we find, okay, if lambda is real, it's really easy to see, we have three cases. Lambda equal to lambda bigger than zero, lambda less than zero and lambda equals zero, okay? Now what we say is if lambda is bigger than zero, you naturally have something like this. Lambda is less than zero, naturally you have something like this. Lambda equal to zero, we leave it for later. It's called degenerate, okay? Then we say, do you have a sink? Do you have a source? Can be told by these two, okay, of course. If you have two solutions, you have two lambda, these two lambda can give you two po three possible situations. Both are going out, that's a source. Both are coming in, that's a sink. And the one is going out, one is coming in. That gives you a settle, okay? After that, we went all the way to, what if lambda is complex? And that is where we are right now, okay? Lambda is complex, this come from 3.4. What we did is every time you have a complex eigenvalue, lambda equals a plus bi, basically you have a corresponding eigenvalue which is lambda equals a minus bi. They always appear in pairs, remember? You solve a quadratic, you have plus or minus bi. Once you have that, naturally you have this solution which looks like e to the lambda t, which is e to the a plus bi. T. Now we say we can first decompose it into the real part and the imaginary part. And finally, for the part with I, we use Euler's formula. We have cosine bi, cosine bt plus I sine bt. Uh, here, Euler's formula ei theta equals cosine. We try to talk about why this formula is true using Taylor expansion and all the, et cetera. Okay, finally, we have a real part. We have a imaginary part. Then we observe several interesting things. Number one, Well, number one, we observe that um, if y satisfies the differential equation, so do y real. 
and y imaginary. We tried to do a proof last time. Simply, you just plug y back into it. Okay, you finally have a real part. You have the imaginary part. The real part has to equal to the real part. The imaginary has to equal to imaginary. Imaginary. Automatically, you have two different equa differential equations. Two thing prime equals a y, but again y is y real plus y imaginary. Okay, now if you just distribute the prime, prime prime equals a y and distribute a because it's linear. which tells you if your y is the real part and the imaginary part and your y satisfies this equation, therefore, you have this equation here. But now you're basically saying a complex number equals to a complex number. That means the real part equals the real part and the imaginary part equals to the imaginary part. So automatically we have two more. That's basically what we says. So does y real and y imaginary. They both satisfies the equation. That's the first thing we observe. We have two solutions. One is the real, one is the imaginary part. And then, moreover, y real equals this. And the y imaginary look like this. Question, are they linearly independent? Well, you just need to plug in zero, remember? You just plug in zero, you got uh, cosine one. And so of course they're in linearly independent. Of course. Therefore, you also have two linearly independent solution of this. Then you've just got the general solution. You just need two linear independent solutions, remember? Yes. Why? Mm. Let me think about it. Oh, if I give it a thought, maybe it's not as smooth as I thought it is. Let's see. <laughs> mm. Let me think about it. Am I right? I think I am right. Okay, so is y equals e a plus b i, which is e a. Hold on. Mm. 
Yes, I did that. Yeah, I think it's all right. Okay. E lambda one T. Okay, one of course. V one. Plus K two. E to lambda two T. V two. Okay. Where your lambda, you can simply just take it to be the complex one. Uh, A plus B I. A minus B I. Let me think about it. This is not the right way to say it. How do I write it down? Linearly independent. My brain is jammed right now. But let's take the example. That should be easier. I think this conclusion is correct, but I need to do it in a careful way. Okay, let's do it by example. Last time we were talking about here, um, we got this y prime equals a y, where a equals negative two, negative three, three, negative two. Okay. We did a quick check, lambda equals, chat my notes, that's negative two plus minus three i. So far so good, okay. Then what we have is we have e to the lambda t v1. All right, so let's take a lambda equals negative two plus three i. Let's do a v equals lambda v. This give us <laughs> AB equals negative two plus three I AB. We solve this. Equals equals negative two A plus three B I. And where is it? Negative two A. No, 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 no. Negative two A plus three A I. Negative two B plus three B I. Okay, in this way, I can solve for A and B. This implies 3B equals 3AI. Therefore, V negative 3B equals plus 3AI, yes. V equals A. Mm. A i negative, which give you a one negative i. All right, that's the eigenvalue. That's the eigenvector. Then the first solution is e lambda t v is going to be e to the negative 2 plus 3i times 1i, which is e to the negative 2t cosine 3t plus 3t plus 
i times one i that gave you let's see the first one i i negative one just keep it this way i e to the negative t two t Cosine three t minus e to the negative two t sine three t because i square this basically is a i square okay you erase it and make it negative Now you have part with i, you have part that's not with i. So we take the real part, which is the first, and here, these two are the real part. We have e to the negative t, how do you say? plus i e to the negative t2 cosine 3t. This will be the real part. This will be the imaginary part. Hmm, then the final solution is just going to be this. There's no e lambda t at that lambda t anymore. Right, I put them in, so now it looks perfect. Does it match? Hmm, now it looks right. Good, good. That's the whole example, but therefore now I can put in here that is going to be y equals k1 y1 plus k2 y2 uh, y imaginary. Here you take all possible linear combinations of them. Right. Read through this example, see if you get what we have. Okay, same procedure we got lambda. You pick one out, try to calculate your eigenvector. Your eigenvector is not going to be real anymore. Your eigenvector is gonna have i here because you have complex eigenvalues. Once you have that, you just do e lambda t, your eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector. You have some also like this once you simplify. Part of it has i, part of it doesn't have i. Now you just put all the parts which is real together. That's one part. Everything with i to be the other part, you got it to a solution. Still okay? That's the real and the imaginary part we said in our theorem. Each of them actually satisfies the original differential equation and they are always linearly independent.
then it's fair for us to say all the solution will just be power possible linear combinations of these two. Okay, linearly independent. If this is okay, we just add the conclusion here. That's basically the general one. Okay, that is all your solution is going to be this. Once you figure out the real and the imaginary. Sounds good? Okay, that's how we do this. If you're interested, remember we have two eigenvalues. The other eigenvalue is this one. Technically, you can repeat the whole process for the other eigenvalue. You will find, and it's always the case, that the two real and the imaginary solution you find will be identical to what we have here. Technically not identical, with the difference of multiplying a constant, okay? But when you do general solution, it really doesn't matter. So we can just pick one. Produce the same answer. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, that's what we have for find, trying to find the solutions of this one. We have two, real and imaginary. We have everything. Equilibriums. Okay. Equilibrium basically means your Y is still this one, lambda T, times your X zero, Y zero, which is your initial condition. It's just this time your E decomposed into E to the AT cosine T plus I sine T. So we have two parts. Now think about what will each one do in your face point. The cosine sine part, we have done this in linear algebra. It just does rotation. Moreover, they will always have the same period. Therefore, it will always produce you a circle. Mm. If we take this to be, yeah, let's just not take this. This one will always rotate. Now, what does the first part do? The first part is a real number. A real number only has something to do. That is, it will make your vector longer or shorter. Okay, so this one actually does the scaling. Okay. Well, when you scale, you either make it longer or you make it shorter. And it really depends on what's your A. If A is positive, e to the AT is bigger than one, right? So as T goes by, this one just become longer. And when A is less than zero, this one become shorter, okay? And when A equals zero, you just stay the same, no scaling. Okay, 
that's roughly how the trajectory is going to change. Andrew? Um, so when you mean it, it gets longer, does that just mean the circle gets larger? Let me draw it. Let me draw it. Okay. A bigger than zero, you're doing a circle if nothing changed, right? But now if it gets longer, you basically have this. Spiral. And you spiral away. As you rotate, you become longer. You become bigger and bigger and bigger. When A is less than zero, you also spiral, but you spiral this way, this way. Okay, you spiral in. If A equals zero, you spiral and don't change anything you become a circle. <clears throat> okay. I think it's fair for us to call this one a spiral source. Call this one spiral think, sink. Finally, the last one we call it a center, but basically it's just a circle. Okay, now if we compare what we have for uh, real, let's talk about a sink first. If it's real, number one, we know we do have something called straight line solution. That means if you touch this line, you just go there. So it's very possible that you have something like this. You go just directly into zero at different speed, maybe into directions, but you will never have something like this. That is, you go here, but if somehow you cross this line. This will never happen. Sounds good? Okay, so for real, you stay in the quadrants. You never cross. Because if you just, you go too fast, you hit one of the straight line solution, automatically you got sucked in. You don't go beyond, because on the straight line, you just go in, okay? However, for spiral sync, it's very possible that you can do things like this now. So this is general sync. This is spiral sync. And for spiral sync, of course, you don't have straight line. Otherwise, your spiral cannot pass that. Once you touch the straight line, you just got sucked in. Okay. So for this one to go go um, go all the way around, you cannot have any straight line solution. Now you know they correspond to different eigenvalues. Moreover, spiral source, spiral sink, really just depends on the real part. This one determines sink or source. Okay. B, what does B do? Well, B determine cosine BT and sine bt. So b is actually the frequency. Okay, a bigger b just means this one just spiral quicker. So b is almost like a angular frequency. Roughly, depending on how you take the unit, you can basically multiply it by two pi, if you want, or divide by two pi.
All right. That's what we have. Some quick example. Undamped harmonic oscillator. Okay, what's there? Well, y prime prime equals negative y. Y V prime equals Y prime equals V. A determined Number one, there is no straight line solution. Number two, the real part equals zero. That means your e to the at, okay? Only give you one. It's not spiraling away, it's not spiraling in, it's a center. Therefore, the face portrait is going to be on this circle. You can easily verify one of the example we had before for dumped. Harmonic oscillator. Okay, remember the thing become like this. And eventually that harmonic oscillator stops. Now you know that thing is gonna have a complex. Lambda equals a plus b i minus, and a is less than zero. That's what we had before. Okay. Okay, we finished the real, distinct, we finished complex. Any questions so far? In three dimension, four dimension, five dimension, if you have more variables, basically what happens is some of them will be real, some of them will be complex, okay? Good news is complex always appear in pairs. So every time you have complex appearing in pairs, in that phase plane, the whole thing is rotating. Meanwhile, in other direction, nothing may be increasing or decreasing, depending on your eigenvalues. Okay, so you can decompose them into different cases. For example, for a 3D system, Okay, I don't want to solve it. So let's just say you have AV, and then you end up having three lambda. Uh, plus I, lambda equals uh, negative two minus I. Okay. That means these two are going to spiral in And this one is going to go into 10 to infinity as t goes to zero. Okay, so our phase plan become phase space. I don't know how to name them, just name them x, y, z, maybe. 
then basically what you will see is this one spirals away. Meanwhile, it goes up. This direction is the three. And in this plane, you're trying to do the spiral in, spiral out case. Oh, I took spiral. I draw a spiral out. So let's just take this to be positive. This should be spiral away. Yeah. For the spiral in thing, what you should have is something like this. Take it back. It should be. Yeah, this is actually the spiral in. when you go away. All right, everything looks okay here. Complex, real, e to the lambda t, both case. It's just when you have complex lambda, you have the real and the imaginary part, which give you cosine and sine. Okay. Now let's go to 3.5, repeat it. and zero value eigenvalues. Okay. Personally, let's go over a zero value first. Because basically that tells you, you have lead to lambda t, but if lambda is zero, this gives you e to the zero, which is one, which is kind of weird, okay? But let's talk about it. Lambda minus. Okay, we got two eigenvalues. Negative four, zero.
for negative four, there's nothing tricky. Very quickly, we have negative three B equals three A. And negative three B equals three A. A equals B, negative A equals B. This implies your V equals AB equals A, negative A, which is A, one, negative one. All right, that's the first one. Therefore, we have e to the negative 4t to be our first solution. Up to now, it's standard. Now what we're gonna do is do the same thing for zero. See if anything goes wrong. Zero V that means um, which give you a equal b plus b equals 3a. This implies v equal a 3a, which is 1, 3. So lambda equal to zero gives you e to the zero t, one, three. And e to the zero t is nothing but just one. So far, nothing is wrong. You can still go ahead and try to find the eigenvector. Zero feels weird, but you can actually write everything down without trouble. How about you put them all together into the general solution? The only trouble is you don't have an e to the lambda t here anymore. It's actually basically one. Okay, so computational wise, so far, no difficulty. This one looks reasonable. You still have two independent solution. Okay, one of them is actually a constant solution. Now if you draw the phase shift, uh, draw the phase plane. Here's your X, here's your Y. Okay. Now we know we have two straight line solution. Y is one negative one.
on this direction, we have e to the negative 4t. So what we have is this. The other solution is 1, 3. On this thing, we have nothing. If you pick a point, the point just stay there. It doesn't go away. It doesn't go in. Sounds good. What about everything else? For example, a point here. Well, a point here is going to go in this direction, which is parallel to this, and this direction, which is parallel to that. Okay. For this direction, it just stay. It never moves. For this direction, this one goes to zero, just as this one does. So this, what this one does is it goes here and it goes here. And if you draw another one, it goes here and goes here. Okay. So you're not going to see two directions anymore. Before, remember, you're going left. Meanwhile, you're going up. So that's why you have some curve like this. Now you're only going in one direction. In the other direction, you don't move at all. So every solution is going to be a straight line like this. Hmm, should I draw it? Yeah, let's just draw it. Sounds good. That's the reason why this is called degenerate. You looks like a 2D system, but your behavior is like one dimension because the two dimension doesn't, you, there's one dimension which you don't move at all. Two dimension behave like a 1D. There is a direction which is wasted. Okay. Or you can say you don't deserve to be a two dimensional system. Some other, some other stuff you can think about. That is when we try to do this. If you have an eigenvector, eigenvalue to be zero, let's, let me put it here. If lambda equal to zero, inevitably you have to do this to find an eigenvector, right? But if lambda is zero, inevitably you have to solve this. Like we said, AV equal to zero, usually only have trivial solution. But if you solve things like this, that means this one has non-trivial solution. then automatically you know, if this happened, A is not full rank. Or invertible, or linear independent, you don't have all, any of those. And basically what you have is, if it's diagonal for the simplest case, you're supposed to have zero, zero, two, three, one, four, for all your eigenvalues. But somehow you have a zero on the diagonal. That means this whole dimension is wasted your system basically is equivalent to everything left, which is fewer dimension.
So if you have a zero as your eigenvalue, that basically means the real problem is easier than it appears to be. Okay, so that's actually not a bad case, that's a great case. Everything makes sense so far? For the repeated ones, we're gonna do it next time. It's a little bit more complicated, but let's see the examples. I totally forgot I need to show this. Okay, let me see if you can see it. All right. Spiral think really quickly. You did something like that. Uh, you got the eigenvalue, negative two plus minus three i, 3i is going to rotate the thing. Negative 2 is the real part, and it's negative. That means this one is going to spiral. Meanwhile, it becomes shorter because it's e to the negative 2t. Okay. Drawing the phase plane. It's not hard to see. It's spiraling in. No straight line solution, as we indicated. There's no straight line solution. Now for spiral out, similar example. This time you have you pay attention to the one here. The one is positive. That means the whole thing is e to the t. e to the t become infinity as t become bigger. So the whole thing spiral and the whole thing spiral out. Okay. Now for center, we have done this before. It's pretty easy to see. It just like rotates forever, forever, forever. Never go to zero, zero. Never leave the plane. All right, now for 3.5. Well, it's already here, so that's nice. This is the degenerate case we just did. Okay, remember we have one negative one and one three. On the orange part, you don't move at all. Once you are there, you're stuck there. Okay, on the green part, you actually move to the center because you have a negative number. Together, you can see all the blue lines are the solutions. So you can see, even though you have something two dimension, but clearly they give you something parallel which only behave like a one dimensional system. Okay, the second dimension doesn't add any more information other than where you start. All right, next time we will show, this will be what happens to uh, when you have some repeated eigenvalues. It's a little bit more complicated. The key is try to find the second eigenvector. Usually you only have one. Okay. That's all we have for today. Stay if you have any questions, otherwise the class is over. <laughs>